Uh, yeah, Misha, thanks for introduction. Um, I have uh, many co-authors from different universities, from different organizations, and uh, I'm from Skolte. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me present. Uh, and let's start. Uh, so why is there need for models of generators? For multiple real-time energy management tasks, system operator needs to maintain an up-to-date model of all the generators in the system. However, the generator is subject to many and often rather significant changes. Thus, there is need in identifying and updating the generator model often. We see an opportunity for such updates in data-driven learning of generator model. We thus pose and resolve the challenge of developing a hierarchy of data-driven reduced models of power generators, which allows for light and accurate assessment of generator models for use by system operators. We aim to devise, train, and compare the performance of two types of models, power system informed type and uh, uninformed type. The physics informed models are built based on parameterized system of nonlinear differential algebraic equations, DAEs, of sufficiently high order. Learning such models means reconstructing parameters of the DAEs from the available data. In the physics uninformed setting, we test performances of vector autoregressive process, weight drop, long short term memory neural network, and neural ordinary differential equations learning scheme. Learning in this case is an optimization of the vector of parameters of one of these models. Uh, models that uh, I have listed differ in explainability and efficiency, with uh, the physics informed method being the most explainable and the least efficient, and weight drop to long short term memory neural network being the least explainable and the most efficient. Uh, so, uh, we optimize parameters of our models by minimizing the mean squared error loss function. We solve this optimization problem using gradient based method Adam. And on the slide, you can see the uh, formula for uh, mean squared error. And uh, two, uh, two values enter this formula, which is S and S hat. S is the ground truth, and uh, S hat is the model prediction. And uh, meaning of s hat is different in uh, uh, physics informed and uninformed case. In the physics uninformed case, it's just the result uh, of forward propagation uh, of any model. So it can be uh, regression or it can be a neural network. And in the physics uninformed case, uh, it's a direct solution of the DAEs. Um, uh, so since our learning depends on data, we generate a synthetic data for our experiments. We use open IPSL library for open Modelica. And uh, we implemented uh, an example grid from uh, Kundur uh, uh, Power System Analysis and Control book. Uh, so it's uh, on the uh, right hand side of the slide on the top image. Uh, we start with stationary initial condition corresponding to the solution of the static AC power flow found with PSAT library. Then we introduce stochastic perturbation at the external to the generator part of the grid by adding statistically steady random perturbations implemented in the form of stochastic folds to the ground imposed at the connection between the second bus and the first power line, right here. The erectness of the folds was set to zero, and the resistance of the folds was chosen to lie in such a range that the resulting dynamics do not lead to a power collapse. The folds are open for a fixed time of 0.1 second and sequentially uh, at times determined by a stationary telegraph process, master equations for which are listed on the slide. And also on the right hand side, you can see an example of a schedule where uh, zero determine, um, denotes that there is no fault and one denotes that there is a fault at this point of time. And uh, the x uh, axis is for a time in seconds. Um, in our physical informed model, we employ a third order model of a generator with a bus fed thyristor excitation system containing PSS and AVR, both with derivative feedback and mounted to an infinite bus. The DAEs describing such generator uh, are presented on the left hand side. It's not full because it doesn't fit on the slide. Um, so, and they can be summarized in a compact form on the right hand side of the slide. Um, and uh, since uh, in our setting, uh, voltage is input, uh, so it is known, we can exclude it from the system. Uh, and uh, then the following 
system of DA splits into two disconnected parts, an ODE governing dynamics of X, the state of the system under uh, known B voltages, and an algebraic relation giving an explicit expression for the output vector of disturbances S. Therefore, estimation of S in the physics-informed approach is simply solution of the ODE followed by explicit nonlinear transformation. The only complication is that we need our ODE solver to support exogenous variables V. We will thus refer uh, to uh, DAE learning as ODE approach further. Uh, so uh, the methodology uh, that we developed is the following. The gist of our solution for physics informed setting is in the joint method. The advantage of a joint method is uh, the fact that it allows you utilizing a numerical integration scheme alongside with the Adam uh, optimization algorithm. Our implementation of the joint method is adapted to support exogenous variables, uh, voltages namely. To aid conversions, we also rescale parameters for training and consider the optimization over the dimensional uh, unit cube. We also initialize the parameters in such a way that uh, initial algebraic condition is satisfied approximately. Um, next uh, on the list is vector autoregressive process and uh, general autoregressive model is a proven tool in many stationary time series applications. Vector autoregressive process has uh, one hyperparameter, uh, it is P, its order. And we can also see that uh, it has uh, exogenous inputs uh, supported in it. Uh, so, uh, to determine the optimal uh, hyperparameter, the order of uh, vector autoregressive model, we carried out several experiments. Uh, in the first experiments, uh, given two time series, uh, we construct a matrix of correlations between the two variables shifted by different time lags. Uh, so, you can see uh, that here I have, for example, uh, active power and the voltage, here I have active power and uh, phase, etc. So, um, this matrix is built as follows. Columns are uh, denoting the legs in first variable, uh, and the um, rows denote the legs for in the second variable. Next, we invert these matrices, and this is what I'm presenting on the slide, and investigate uh, non-zero elements. So um, we need to find the uh, longest range of non-zeros in uh, the left uh, top a triangle of each matrix. And we can see that uh, we immediately obtain causal relation between the variables. So because here we have non-zeros and it means that uh, P is a result of change uh, in uh, phi, which is phase. Next, uh, we also derive from this calculation that for all pairs of variables, notable dependence occurs with time lags of up to 32. And uh, the maximum lag is reached right here for, uh, for active power and phase. This decision is further supported by information criteria-based order selection methods, out of which we chose archaic information criteria and the Bayesian information criteria, which we observed to yield the most stable results for our case. And they both uh, indicate time lag of 32 time steps uh, as our previous experiment. Uh, in our main results section, um, we experimented with several sequence prediction models built on neural networks. And the best performing model uh, that we further utilized is weight dropped long short term memory neural network. Uh, it uh, builds upon a uh, long short term memory neural network, uh, architecture for which is presented uh, in the uh, bottom of the slide. So it actually repeats the same filter for every time step that uh, is fitted into it. And uh, we drop long short term memory network uh, builds not on one but on three such uh, models, which are applied sequentially to capture uh, different ranges of dependencies within the data. Uh, next, uh, what uh, stands out in this model is uh, that it makes use of a number of different training techniques, uh, for example, all sorts of dropout and uh, weight decay, variety sequence lines, uh, all to capture wide and varying ranges of dependencies in the data. We also use clever um, learning uh, schedule, which is uh, we first uh, pre-train our neural network to predict uh, the next input. And then uh, after it learns um, the physics of uh, predicting the next um, 
next voltages based on previous voltages, we fine-tune it uh, to, uh, we change its output and we uh, fine-tune it to predict uh, the powers. So, uh, and the last one on the list is uh, neural uh, ordinary differential equation. And this method can be used as a continuous time extension to neural networks with the help of, again, a joint method. It consists in seeking for a vector ordinary differential equation with nonlinearity represented by a deep neural network. Specifically, we use a, a right-hand side given by a two-layer fully connected neural network with 100 hidden units and a rectified linear unit activation function between the layers. We use the same experimental setup for uh, all uh, of our models and uh, we train the models to read uh, pairs of voltage and phase uh, sequentially from the stream and output um, active and reactive power in, in also in a window. The objective function is the mean squared error and we estimate the final quality of prediction using the normalized root mean squared error metric. Uh, the performance of all models depends on the regime. Uh, uh, that means on the order of noise, uh, because we prepare the data with different orders of noise. And in almost all cases, the weight drop to long short-term memory network exhibits the best performance with the uh, ODE model being a strong competitor and neural ODE model positioned right in the middle. And on this slide, you can uh, see an example of uh, prediction obtained from vector autoregressive process. And on this slide, you um, will have uh, an example obtained from the uh, weight drop long short term memory network. Um, we also experiment uh, with each black box model. Uh, we train it on the data set with a specific, some specific noise order and examine the quality of the training on all other data sets not used in the training. Uh, that means with different orders of noise. And from this experiment, we obtain that weight drop long short term memory model is not quite adaptable to uh, changes in noise level. And it means that during training, we have to present it with um, different, um, uh, with the data containing different orders of noise uh, that can occur in practice. And this behavior is actually shared between the black box models. Also providing more complex data for training results in a better overall model. And uh, in contrast, ODE model is much more adaptable if trained well enough. Uh, we uh, also continue to train some of the models on the data set with randomized generator parameters. So not, they are not fixed, but randomized to test generalizability to new unseen machines. Through this experiment, we found that uh, the LSTM model is in fact generalizable with little performance degradation and ODE model is not generalizable. Uh, on this slide, you can see um, uh, output of long short term memory network uh, trained on, uh, well, trained as I said it, and um, uh, on this data set with randomized generator parameters. You can see that the quality is, the overall quality is pretty good. Uh, with only large deviations in the areas where the uh, actual values are large, uh, where the deviation from uh, static power flow values is large. So, yeah, and in this table we have uh, a comparison between the uh, metric that we choose, normalized root and squared error, and uh, it supports my claim that neural ODE is positioned in the middle between uh, long short term memory and the ODE. Uh, network. This is on a uh, data set with randomized parameters. Uh, so in summary, we have introduced and tested light and accurate machine learning models of a power generator. We have also designed our custom synthetic data generation process to provide the data needed to train the models. Uh, we show that the long short term memory method is truly nonlinear and robust to high order perturbations and randomization of the generator parameters. We prove through extensive experiments that power generator parameters can be estimated from terminal boost data through the physics informed approaches built on low dimensional parameterization of the generators dominant equations. And uh, the preliminary analysis of the hierarchy of reduced models of generator designed and tested in our paper shows promise for future use as reduced order models in different regimes and other different circumstances. However, future tests will be needed to prove practical utility of our results, in particular in terms of tests based on actual, not synthetic measurements. Uh, this is all from me. Thanks. Thank you for your attention.
Uh, thank you, Nikolai. Uh, so we have two questions. One asked by Andrea Gorbanov was asked actually pretty early before you uh, concluded and started to, to compare. Uh, but let me still read it. So he, he is wondering what are advantages of physically informed model. And then uh, he is basically asking why couldn't we just estimate parameters of the model uh, uh, that system operator has? Why do you need it? Uh, so it's different kind of modeling. Uh, in uh, ODE model, uh, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm estimating the parameters. And uh, uh, the other models are more or less generative, so they can um, generate uh, uh, the future based on the past. So this is also an answer to some other question. Um, no. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, so we, we also have a question from uh, Basen and Izzy, so our last presenters. Uh, specifically, it's about neural ODE, and, um, uh, which is maybe a generative model. And they're asking, uh, yeah, so uh, for instance, uh, if you can do some extrapolation, uh, future and scene scenarios. Uh, yes, we can, but for limited uh, horizon in the future. So uh, it cannot model uh, long, uh, long into the future, but it can, in, in principle. Thank you. Uh, we also have a question from Janos. So Janos uh, correctly points out that faults happen rarely, and he wonders if you can do parameter estimations from normal, not anomalous data. Uh, yes, uh, surely. Uh, uh, we chose faults because uh, of the limitations of the software that uh, we were working with, and also because uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, it brings the system to a heavily nonlinear regime. That was uh, uh, that was interesting for us to explore. Okay, okay. Thank you, Nikolai. So we still have a couple of minutes. I, I actually also have a question. Um, in relation to first talk, uh, when we heard about Kalman filter, where do you think Kalman filter method would fit in hierarchy of models you have? Uh, so Kalman filter is a more lightweight solution um, for, um, so basically uh, it, uh, I would say that it, well, it's physics informed, first of all. Uh, second, it is, uh, uh, I believe it is less accurate than the, than the solution that I developed, but I need uh, more comparison. Uh, so, but on contrast, it is more lightweight. Okay, okay, cool. Uh...